They said, well, you only have two beds. Where's the rest of us going to sleep? And so the, the white couch in that far room, it's a sofa bed. So I had two beds there. I had mine. We put a cot there. This is a sofa bed. And then what we did was we put, I had two cots. So we had, uh, what, 18 people We're not, Are we staying over? I, didn't have I hope not. No, I, don't, I don't have the cots. <laughs> and the only thing that I remember is I felt so bad for my water pump. <laughs> well, what about the other side of it? Well, no, I mean, I, 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 I took off my, uh, because I normally heat with uh, my water with the Africa's hot water system. But I have a backup. So you'll hear me say, everything here has a backup. Everything here was built for the next seven generations. That's, my, that, that's been my philosophy. So I see two people coming and they're pointing and saying, there's people in that room. Uh, and, oh, thanks, Barry. Can, yeah, they're late. That's okay. <laughs> and, and, and so everything has, as I say, a, a backup. So I have an on-demand, which you, which you will see as part of the second part of the uh, meeting. Uh, there's going to be, um, we're going to go down into what I call the tornado room. It's the only part of the house that's below grade. Um, when there was a house like this, is not the first house like this. This is actually the third uh, of similar construction. The second one, just northeast of Durham, was hit by a tornado. Back when the tornado, I don't that young fellow was killed in the conservation. Well, this house was just on the other side of the road from the conservation authority. The house beside it was totally wiped out. The house on the other side was 95% wiped out. This house was standing because of the construction. And I will mention uh, how it's constructed afterwards. So we have uh, yeah, so we got some here. here. So Vito, do you want to talk a little bit about the... I'm, yeah, I, I just thought I'd give a quick until everyone arrived. And now, I don't want to feel as if I'm superior and I'm on a higher level. <laughs> As I no worries, to, buddy. No worries. As I mentioned, <laughs> as I mentioned to uh, those people who came at the end saying, you want me to bring anything? I go, we had chairs because a, a, a single bachelor does not think of having uh, 20 chairs handy. <laughs> Even though uh, the family that came to help me, they, I had them bring their own. <laughs> so I also like to sit here because I can see if anyone's coming. Thanks very much for... Uh, you know, following <laughs> the leader, so to speak, by going. The driveway was not built for tours. Now, uh, what happened was, uh, I've been showing this place since it was built six years ago to, I think it's about 200 people now. Most of them have people who have just been driving by. Okay. And I, I want to start to meet by saying something about human nature. Uh, two things. When they come to ask, I said, have you not stopped here before? And the first thing they said, yeah, this is about our third or fourth time, and I, we finally decided to ask. You know, we figured the person must be two-legged human, and they're not going to bite. And, and the other thing that was funny was, if there was two people in the car, male and female, always the, the, the wife or the female would come out. Uh, my boyfriend or my husband has some questions to ask you. Okay? <laughs> and then once, once I said yes, she would go back down, and he would come and have all these questions. I'm going... You know, and, and I thought that was uh, something to say about human nature. Anyway, so um, I've given talks on this house uh, for the last six years, down at, mostly down in the city. Uh, I guess to roughly about 500 to 700 people already. Uh, because that was part of a, an organic market. And as it turns out, many of the people knew what, what I was doing. I have a PowerPoint presentation even, but I don't deal with computers, I don't like technology, so I just had someone take pictures of the place and, and we took it down and, and the, the fellow who helped me with this uh, helped with those. So, but that's going to be in the second half. Now, what we thought we would do um, was there are numerous people in the area who live off-grid. I don't like to use the word off-grid because off-grid means only a very small, minute part of living sustainably. All it refers to is, I'm, I'm, I'm producing and supplying my own power that, I, that I'm paying extra for initially so that I don't have to donate money to Hydro One or Boost Power or whoever. That's really, but 
that is basically almost meaningless because it's how one lives or one's habits that has to be slightly adjusted. So me living here and other people living here uh, or in, in their own homes has been a result of change of thinking or a yearning for living closer to the uh, rhythms of nature. This house is built to, to take into account exactly where the sun is all year round, every day. That's how the overhang, the, how the house is angled, all that is, the, and, but how I came to this, it, 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 I, I will mention in the second half. But I mention this because there are people in the area who are doing things. Uh, but we started a renewable energy uh, committee with the idea of using that as a draw because people say, oh, renewable energy, I can boost my own power. Oh, that's, but that's only the tip of the iceberg. So what we thought we would do is in, in April have a large workshop. Now, I have done three or four of these already. But the last one I did was in 2012. Uh, and I was getting tired. <laughs> I did everything myself. <laughs> so Barry was very nice to say, well, you know, we're a sustainability network, and no one's, you know, Great Blue Sustainability Network wants to do things as well to get more people involved. Because every time that I would open this house up or I would put out an ad that we're going to do a workshop, we had 220 some people show up in Plesherton on April the 4th during a snowstorm where the Highway 10 and Highway 4 were closed. <laughs> Half those people were not people who signed up, were people who were told to get off the road. They came, and they even listened, had coffee, and, they, and some of those people became the most interested. I, I, one of them is a close friend of mine now. says, that changed my life. A snowstorm. <laughs> and so the yearning, I'll call it, for not necessarily going back to nature, but living a lifestyle so that we don't bankrupt our, I like to always say, like, I always compare uh, how I live uh, based upon how much, uh, how I think of a bank account. If I'm constantly drawing out, away from nature, and if everyone's doing the same, eventually we're going to be in serious trouble. Well, isn't that where we are now? <laughs> so that that workshop you're talking about was that that was the survival group or something, wasn't it? No, that was that was the first one, and then we did three or four more. Uh, but the one I'm talking about was only on renewable energy. The survival okay. was because there was a snowstorm that weekend. Yes, yeah. it was, and, okay. and, yet, and yet we had incredible uh, numbers of people who showed up. But we yeah. was always at the Kinplex in question because my farm was just five to seven minutes mm -hmm. south of that on, on Highway 10. So usually, what you find is. You know, unless it's miraculous. Um, David, someone's going to try to come in that door. Can you help me? So, so basically, uh, is that there? Yeah. Okay. So, I didn't just miraculously uh, just say one day, oh, how am I living here? I'm, I'm going to have to change my life. I don't like this, what I'm seeing around there. And how come anyone else thinks the way I do? And is there something wrong with me? No, it was a, a, a journey. It was an evolution in thinking. Some people get it quicker. Some people, you know, it takes a long time. So I look, was already involved with renewable energy with people who are the pioneers from here. And most of these pioneers are now no longer with us. Uh, the, the person, uh, and they were at the Bruce, Harold Medill and C.D. Kleinow, these were the pillars of renewable energy for this area when renewable energy were swear words in here, uh, in, in this area. Even when I started, and I was starting to do things 20 years ago, uh, I was told, well, just, just go back to where you came from. This is, you know, we're, we're, we're that was before Bruce Power was around, but we're, we're nuclear country, you know, we're, we're based upon fossil fuels and, and all that. So, so why don't you go to, you know, some other place? And I said, well, I must be doing something well because most people are against me. <laughs> so, uh, but, so Barry and I thought, well, let's have a workshop that talks about and promotes renewable energy and sustainable lifestyle. And to show that you don't have to do this. 
when I started, I, I, I changed with a simple light bulb. After my hips, I have two artificial hips. So I was laid off uh, from baking. And someone mentioned to me something about uh, how rocks give off a lot of heat. And I said, well, let's, and, and what's that called? Someone said thermal mass. I said, oh, wow, that's a beautiful word as opposed to rocks generating uh, a heat. So I said, I'll, I'll, I'll use thermal mass and people think I know what I'm talking about. So I was uh, incapacitated because like, I, I had two hips done. And, uh, it was a congenital problem, I'll just say that from birth. And so I had them done eight, nine weeks apart. So I'd be lying in bed reading. And, and I went to a fellow, because I was a baker that wasn't baking, so I had a big, huge baking pan. I asked the friend, can you bring in this rock? It was a rock that was really heavy. He put it in uh, into the baking pan. We put it by the windowsill. And I noticed that on a sunny day, so much heat would come from it for two or three hours after the sun went down. So I said, oh, OK, let's get a bigger rock. So I got even a bigger fella, about a big, just barely able to carry it. We put it in there. That rock, which would be, um, well, it would be like, like that. So it was heavy. It gave enough heat that I could take off all the heating because I had baseboard heaters. I needed no external heat except from that rock because of the radiant heat came from. I said, thermal mass, this is, this is great. I mean, and then you look at somehow the way our, old, uh, our older houses were built. They were built so that that thermal mass would be available to people living inside the home. And so that was part of my journey. So really what we thought was, if we had, if we showed people that it's not just how you produce electricity, it's how you make use of all the energy of Mother Nature as our four parents or we're, we're very much aware of and how we have replaced with technological devices which are totally governed by um, you know electricity and power and fossil fuels and whatever so uh, what we thought we would do is is to bring people that eat anywhere from very excited and doing a lot to like to people saying, I, I don't know what to do. I, I live in a own sound. I mean, well, what can I do? I'm renting. Or, you know, we, we always have ideas of things that, why well, we can't do things, realizing that just a little bit. So when I got started, I did not know what to do. So I heard of, I don't know if you've heard of Bullfrog Energy, renewable energy group that, that I paid an additional premium of two, I don't even know if they're around now, of two. Bullfrog Power. Yeah. yeah, here's another gentleman coming. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, and I paid the extra two and a half cents or three cents per kilowatt hour so that they would get it. So I was helping renewable energy in that regard because I, I, I did not know exactly what, what to do at that time. So you take small steps. Like someone said, if I'm going to get from this part of Grand Canyon to the other side, most people, in, in, you know, when, when are looking at renewable energy, want to take that giant leap. And if they don't make it, tough. Well, why don't you just walk slowly around until you get to the other side? It's a wonderful journey, and you'll ha and you'll enjoy nature while you're doing it. So that has been always my philosophy, and the people who have taught me. So, uh, so of the 50 or 60 homes that I have seen, off-grid, uh, sustainable lifestyle, there's quite a few in this area. So let's. So Barry and I thought, let's have a workshop in April on. Um, green living, green lifestyle, sustainable living, and, oh, you want to have a seat here? And, 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 and that way, uh, to show that it's just not the pr production of electricity with solar photovoltaics. Even though the advancements made in solar, solar photovoltaics in the last decade has been phenomenal. Uh, I went from saying, yay, $10 a watt, how cheap am I getting a solar panel, to uh, a few years later being told, yay, seven fifty a watt, I can now put solar panels on my old farm, you know, and then two years later saying, what, they're now $4 a watt, so when I moved in here, I go, yay, two twenty five a watt, I'm really doing <laughs> wonderful, and then now I'm finding what I can get for $1.10, <laughs> and, and these are their standard solar panels. Now, the one thing about solar panels is people say, well, oh, they're modular. Oh, so we can start small and work our way. So this is something, again, that can help people. 
So the advancements in solar has been phenomenal uh, regarding producing electricity. The, which you'll see later, the solar hot water that we have here, uh, that's been around forever. I remember one of the chaps, Siggy Kleinow, he had, when he invited us up to the Bruce, and he was, he was cooking dinner outside. Well, he was cooking dinner in a solar oven. And we go, wow. So he had reflective material that was based totally on the sun. He says, it's a good thing for you people it's sunny today because you're <laughs> going to get something nice and warm. You know? And now he was a vegetarian, so he didn't really care, but he was looking towards us. You know? That was Ziggy. That's right. Ziggy. And so he cooked dinner for us totally by the sun with a solar oven. So, and this was known by uh, people... Oh, I think we're just, uh, if that's Can bothering. I'll, so now we have, oh, that's, that's, that's okay. Uh, I'll get it low because that's going to be hot. So anyways, if anyone wants tea, I'm just going to put this off on the side because, and I can always put it on when we're ready yeah. to have tea. I, I didn't put this, uh, uh, this uh, airtight cookwood stove on because I figured one, one wood stove plus 15 people, and uh, we have to open every single window, which is impossible because all the windows on the south never open. And there's a reason for that, because they're more efficient this way, to allow sun in. So, where was I? Oh, I was with Ziggy. So, the way of doing things, almost everything I noticed that I was doing, I said, maybe I can do it a little bit where I'm not as ab abusive. And when I looked at all the things that I was doing, I said, this is going to take a lifetime. Because almost everything society does is not with that in mind. And I look at my, my dog and my cats. I used to have all sorts of farm animals back at the farm. And it was almost like they were all telling me, how come you're the least efficient species on this farm? And uh, now whether I understood them or not, I don't know. But that's, how, that's what I got from them. <laughs> and, and so... This is a slow process, and maybe with help from people who have uh, given of their wisdom uh, you know, to some of us, that we can pass it on. And uh, I know of, uh, of about six or seven people right now that are, ha are living off-grid. I know even more that don't want to ha have had it with the human species almost because they were so um, abused by people and their neighbors that they like to be, they're very private. But, and then a good, that I know, a good one quarter of the homes in the area that are off grid and uh, are built in such a way for uh, sustainable living, the people who built them are no longer either with us or they moved on. And the people who, who moved into them, most of the people have Converted their homes back to conventional, but uh, you know, put up, put up the uh, old uh, uh, hydro lines, and and you know, forget about everything that has been done. I mean, so uh, the opportunities are there for to have a workshop where we can have a few people who have been in the industry. What I mean by that is that people who are in the construction who said everything we need to build a house better than almost any other house in Ontario you can get from Grey Bruce. Materials of any sort. Now, solar panels you can't. <laughs> but the building of the home you can, whether it's in the form of straw, hemp, um, you know, the type of clay built homes that you can do. You can do, build earth ships inside, um, uh, you know, the, the earth uh, to a certain degree. Uh, it's a matter of doing a perspective and looking at, oh, the, the greatest shape and the most energy efficient shape on the planet is not rectangular or square. <laughs> now, I have a, I have a rectangular one uh, for, for, for another reason. Uh, but is, and so all of a sudden, you know, in, in the 50s, someone said, well, I, I, someone else had an idea. So the, the, uh, the geodesic dome with, the, you know, triangular uh, model modules in there is probably the one of the strongest shapes around and it's very energy efficient so there are all these new types of 
uh, opportunities that are presenting themselves in the area. So we thought, let's have a workshop and, sh and show this. So the idea was when we did the original workshop, or I, I, I did one, my biggest concern was how am I going to speak to people if I don't know what they want to hear? They don't want to hear a fairy tale. <laughs> so I would send out questionnaires. So instead of doing sending out questionnaires and people, because at that time I, I don't have internet, I don't have a computer. Uh, I have a bad in, in influence on computers. Just ask the Markdale Library. They only limit me to about half an hour or so because I destroy, I, I shut down every uh, terminal that I'm dealing with. And, and it must have something to do with me. Uh, I, I've been told this. It's, it's me. It's not the terminal. It's you. Uh, so I, I've accepted that. Um, and, uh, so, so the idea is to... We thought we'd have a, 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 for a, a little short period of time, and Barry, please help me here, it, it, to get people's ideas of what you would like to see at a workshop and start the dialogue on that. And then after we do that, then I'll go back to uh, describing this house and the evolution of the house. Is that okay? Yeah, that's great. And thanks for the the introductory st stuff. And on behalf of everybody, thanks for having us to your house. And I'm about to get up and get a coffee, I think. But um, so all those things. And um, just a little bit more background. Uh, the organization that I work with is called the Grey Bruce Sustainability Network, and it's a ten year old not-for-profit group that um, a lot of the work had been done on the Walkerton area because I lived there for the last 10, well, 25 years, but um, and so, but quite within the last year I've moved to Owen Sound, so we've put our office now out of my home uh, and into the Harmony Center in Owen Sound, uh, which is a great gathering space and we've done a num number of um, workshop type things there. One of our project areas is sustainable living workshops um, where over the years we've hosted geodesic dome greenhouse building sessions and visited um, straw bale construction houses and you know that kind of thing so they're typically day-long workshops that idea and um, so we've got one on the books um, for a sustainable living workshop and the idea of the renewable energy piece uh, in part because of the interaction with the climate action team out of Owen Sound, which brought hundreds of people together that are interested in, in this topic. Um, and the interest of Vitold and his expertise and other people around the table, we formed a subcommittee of the climate action team to focus. We've got one that's looking at waste management, and, and David, um, David Walton is the, is the chair of that climate action team. So there's just some great people involved and lots of interest. And so to blend together um, some of our opportunities, and we have funding, interestingly enough, from places like Bruce Power and Enbridge and OPG, and uh, not everybody's happy with that kind of funding, but money's money in my, uh, my world, and they don't tell us what to do with it. So we're gonna, we'd like to collaborate on hosting a renewable energy, sustainable living workshop, um, and that's kind of what Vito has been talking about. One of my interests really is to see how some of this stuff applies to the average home on grid home in a city like Owen Sound, um, because things like solar panels and um, thermal water systems and you know most of the houses are built so we're not going to redo the walls necessarily, but insulation, that kind of thing, and uh, geothermal, and exploring some of those options as well. So I think we still have some talking to do as far as what that particular spring workshop will be. Um, but I know there's a lot of interest in, you know, in urban areas of on-grid stuff and what we do. So that's sort of where our group is coming from. And um, the idea of today was uh, to get together in the morning and have a bit of a committee meeting uh, as part of the, the Climate Action Committee and talk about planning the workshop. And then the other piece would be a tour. Uh, so as part of that, I sent out an email through our CAT group. Um, and we had an additional 15 people that were interested in, in coming on this. So that made a total of about 
30 altogether. <laughs> so we pretty much said, if you want to be involved in sort of the committee planning level and get the tour, come in the morning. If you just want to be part of the tour, come in the afternoon. So I had a good number of people, a dozen or so, respond and said, we want to be part of the committee. We just want to do the tour. So they'll be coming at 1 o'clock. Now, I have and to tell you, I wasn't aware of this until when Thursday. <laughs> about Because uh, we, we, had, we got our numbers uh, Well, I had, I had 519 instead of 226 for Vito's number. So I kept phoning him and said, how come you're not calling me back? So, oh, okay. anyway, so, so I, I take total know. ownership of that. <laughs> so all of a sudden I go, oh, geez, all these extra people coming. Yeah, so <laughs> we split it up, so there'll be, there'll be two or number two. But that's just an okay. indication of the interest in this kind of stuff, you know, so... But what I'm, I'd be interested in uh, to do just a quick go around to see who's here and, and not tell us life stories or anything, but just a little bit of if there's if it's simply your personal interest in your house or you've got other interests. Would that, would that be okay? Sure. So we, we want to start here because I think I've talked enough. For yeah. A while. And for those that don't know, this is our <laughs> minute taker. Yeah. The proceedings. Uh, it's a 360 uh, camera, and uh, we'll, we'll have it available on the Climate Action Team uh, website. And if you don't want to be part of it, or then go under a couch or something. <laughs> <laughs> or, or the other thing yeah. is that for those of us who aren't on the computer, um, I will say this now, that uh, if you have my phone number, I'm available. Yeah, which, and which one? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, two, two, so, the right one. <laughs> but also, Not all, two, two, six. Yeah. also, I will, we on our website, we'll put up a page, a renewable energy page, where, where we can collect some of these resources and that kind of thing. And it's simply G, <laughs> G-B-S-U-S-N-E-T. So Gray Bruce Sustainability Network. So SUSNET. And if you do that, you'll find it. Okay. So thanks, thanks for coming. Everybody. So, so uh, let's start and go yeah. around, you know, and and let's hope we, we don't finish by about three o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And we hear everyone's life story, and I can go. I, I, I because halfway. Okay, through, you're be gonna, quiet. Let's be quiet. Let me go into that bed there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my name's Jamie. My wife and I live over near Holland Center, and we're in the middle of building a house right now. It's uh, passive solar, kind of a passive solar light. Um, it's more design. And passive solar. Um, yeah, I just wanted to learn more about. Yeah, because we met the first time last week. Yeah, yeah very good. Right. So I'm Santo with uh, Grassroots Solar out of Owen Sound. So I, I moved here from Toronto about uh, four years ago. I have a microfit system on my place, so i pretty self sufficient because I do get so much money every month. <laughs> so my costs are pretty much covered. So I live in a 64 acre property, uh, mostly forest. How many kilowatts do you have? Uh, 11 kilowatts. Oh, okay. Just a little bit over. Yeah, because yeah. the microfit yeah. program was based upon 10. But, but that's now gone. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're still getting paid? I'm 20 year contract. Yeah. I'm still getting paid. The 54 cents. So Nice. That's not bad. Yeah. <laughs> you can yeah. see that the first few people who got involved well, got 82. Yeah. Exactly. But there but, were very few of them because they weren't out, because the, the OPA was so slow. And that, uh, as it turns out, it yeah. came down very, very quickly. But but the price of solar was quite expensive at the time mm -hmm. as well. So, uh, I'm Logan, and uh, I'm working on uh, making intentional communities and very sustainable communities uh, in this area. And one of them is with Santo and uh, oh, making a possible uh, either a campground cooperative uh, or a land share community over there um yeah all right <laughs> uh and i'm tom rice uh and my wife and i started about 20 years ago with judy kittle at rockford yes. yep. and uh, we purchased a, a tracker with some panels uh 80 watt panels uh that's what the standard was then and uh and we also put up a small wind gen generator a whisper uh, 900 watt generator and uh and three Deep cycling uh, charrette batteries. Charrette, yeah, right? charrette, yeah. yeah, yeah, and it, it's it's uh, so we had some of our smaller appliances and electricity was was off grid when we had sun, enough sun. Of course, the batteries you could only deplete them to eighty or ninety percent, unlike lithium batteries. So that was the standard back then. So and then uh, then later on, I uh, on my daughter's house in in Prince Edward County, 
uh, when the microfit program came in, I invested uh, uh, in putting panels on her roof, and she did get the 82 cents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but there's there's not a lot of panels, and uh, they get covered by snow, and they're older panels, so they're not as efficient. So. Anyway, but it, it cuts her hydro bill, by, you know, in two-thirds. And and then, uh, then we put, eventually we put uh, on our house... We, when it initially it, the roofs needed to be south because of the uh, angle of the sun and the expense of the panels. Then when panels came down in price, they, people realized they could be uh, on the east and west as well because the sun moves in the sky. So uh, we live out at Bombay Beach. Uh, so uh, our, our, the sides of our, our house was already built. The, so we put panels on the east and the west side with the uh, and we hooked up to net metering back then, and it's ten kilowatt system, and uh, and but it, the trouble is in the winter they get covered by snow, so the, it's a seasonal thing. So uh, and we also around that time there was a government grant for it. We put in solar hot water, which is the hydrothermal type, not photovoltaic, uh, and so we have an extra hot water tank. Uh, and and so when the weather is good and there's enough sun, uh, we make most of our hot water. And then my wife and I both have electric cars. I was going to say, don't forget the yeah, electric cars. Yeah, my wife has a, a Leaf, which is going into the seventh winter, and we're very, very happy with it. And uh, four years ago, right about now, uh, I purchased a used uh, Model S, Tesla. So uh, it was quite a bit off the regular price. It had 21,000 clicks. And we love it. We love both cars and not having to go to the gas pumps <laughs> and smell the fumes. <laughs> and we're during the summer, if we charge during the daytime, uh, we don't worry about whether it's expensive uh, because uh, we're charging from the sun if it's sunny. Mm -hmm. Okay. We were to hurt you. Well, I want to just say I drive an 05 Subaru Outback, and it uses a lot of oil and uses a lot of gas. <laughs> and, uh, and I've said about that. <laughs> the only other thing I wanted to put on the table was that one of the projects that's been brought to our attention as a group is a hydro um, reservoir project in Meaford. I don't know if ever has yeah. everybody heard about that one. Oh yeah, stored, uh, uh, stored water and yeah. you know they they pump water in off-grid times up and then release water and generate energy. And that's a project, if anybody's interested in exploring more of the positives and negatives of that, um, I'd be interested in talking to them. Oh, yeah. I, I just found out about... Yeah, yeah. well, it's been in the Meaford paper, and it's been, but it's a $2 billion. Billion. 3.3 billion. 3.3 billion. Well, and, what's the return and, on investment? And, anyway. Could it's I all. just add to that? There was a guy in Lion's Head that did that uh, 20 years ago. Just... You, you know, partly experimental and partly for his own benefit, but yeah. uh, it might, I don't know if he's even alive anymore, but it'd be worth searching that out. Yeah, well, that's just, there's one in Michigan. Well, that was Harold company. Bedell. Oh, uh, in, in Lion's Head? Yes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And um, he, he, like, he was one of the two pioneers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, he, he had some very interesting things to say. He had an evolutionary process during that, mm -hmm. his ex experiments. And he finally ended up by saying, this is absolutely insanity if anyone takes this up. <laughs> that, was his, anyway, that, was, that was the final thing that he said. He said it was so encouraging at times, mm -hmm. but he said that until we develop a turbine that is at least 98% oh. efficient, mm -hmm. it's a waste of our time and energy unless, because he was working on a perpetual motion okay. type. And he says, if okay. you could do that, then it will work perfectly well. Yeah. So that's so, another side topic for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, anyways, next. Uh, my name is Reed. I live in uh, Flesherton. I've um, lived there for about four years now. And I've had a long time interest in uh, building first uh, straw bale, then uh, earth ship, and uh, for reasons too numerous to mention, none of it came to pass. Uh, but I'm interested now in retrofitting uh, an older house. Okay, my name's Linda. I live in Owens Sound. I 
started getting interested in stuff like this when I lived up in the Northwest Territories for about five years. It was more looking at um, passive solar and super insulation, okay? I have also built a house in Prince Edward County, also. <laughs> um, and it was a passive <coughs> solar house. Um, I think people probably came to look at it as much because there was a woman building it as anything, because <laughs> that was about 30 years ago. Um, I now live in on Sound and live in an old house, which it would actually be wonderfully situated to be solar, but more than anything, initially, I need to insulate the house. And that's one thing that is a problem. And I also have a factor that um, my back property line is actually on the neighbor's property. I cannot add there. There's another wall that I cannot, that I have to put things on the outside because I can't take away from my stairwell inside. So I, I have to have walls that will be both inside and outside to add insulation. After it was insulated, I would then consider putting on solar. Okay. I also have as a geothermal system. Actually, when I bought it, it had a poorly installed system, and the pipes failed. And I went to natural gas, but then I went back to geothermal with about three, uh, three uh, wells, I think. Anyway, it's extremely uh, sort of, uh, works extremely well. I'm really happy with it. And I got uh, in on the what's called the uh, fit uh, thing uh, for 85 cents or 82 cents. Mm -hmm. But it was very expensive solar panel thing, so I'm not sure I'm making any money on that. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, uh, uh, well, I'm an ardent environmentalist, uh, but uh, just recently got a used uh, Prius C. And to have the police come onto my property thinking that I was uh, that I was stealing electricity because my next door, next door neighbor had a grow up, <laughs> and they thought that it was me because it was a rental that was empty, and they said, well, "You're a bakery. How come your hydro bill is only two thousand dollars a year, and you're a bakery?" And then I had to explain to them about net metering, and uh, of course, they, I was talking a different language than they understood. So uh, we're all in. A process and we all have a lot to offer so what we thought was that given what I've heard is that I have uh, been lucky to have two or three people especially one who have been involved in green living renewable energy he, he's actually employed by the Canadian government to go up to the Arctic to help with their renewable energy systems for the last two decades and he's he He's going to be kind enough to come up and also give you a perspective where when you do a balance sheet of how much energy you use, how much energy you waste, and how much energy you pay for, <laughs> you quickly say, oh man, <laughs> you know, uh, and it's not to be critical because then you take small little incremental steps to figure out how one can improve or whatever. And, but on the other hand is that I shared with you that crazy uh, idea about the rock. Well, there's people here who have done things that can also share you know, their expertise on, on what they have done because, because uh, I, I really liked what you said what, what, what the two of you said about solar panels, about you know how much they cost at the start, and and I remember giving a a, a talk in Toronto, and the, and and one fellow got up and said, um, uh, "How do you, how can you possibly promote solar panels?" I said, well, "What do you mean?" He says, "Well, what are they made of?" I said, "Well, a variety of items, but I know where you're heading, silicon." And they go, "Yeah, well that well that's carcinogenic, that's deadly. So why would I?" put uh, silicon on the outside of my house and I said, what kind of roof do you have? Uh, we have regular shingles. I said, oh, so uh, how, how, uh, how safe are the shingles since they're oil based and they're carcinogenic as well and they leak all the time <laughs> every time it rains. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, and by the way, where does that silicon come from? And he goes, what do you mean? I says, uh, I said, did you know that 95%, now this is back 10 years ago, that 95% of all the silicon that goes into producing solar panels comes from the waste product of the silicon used for laptops, cell phones, and com the computer industry. So instead of going into the landfills, it's going to the companies building solar panels. He walked out of the room. <laughs> I later found out <laughs> he, he worked for Bruce Power. So, but I'm not going to say anything about that. because I, I, So the reason I got into this w w w was threefold. I've already mentioned one, and I wanted to be more with nature. Uh, secondly is I was ill-affected, and I have been ill-affected by electromagnetic radiation, EMF. This house is basically, or mostly, DC. I do have a small inverter to convert a few things to AC that I was mandated to so that my um, uh, smoke detectors are hardwired mm -hmm. and to maintain my hot water system I needed uh, to maintain the warranty I had to use two small little AC pumps. So I said okay well I guess I'll so it's a small inverter but it's the computer of it's the computer area of the house which you will see uh, afterwards. The amount of EMF in this house is I've had people who have extremely low tolerance to EMF, so much so that uh, they're ill affected. This friend of mine from Grand Valley brought him here to test to see how he would be affected in this house. And he found only one spot, and that was in the room that, can, that is totally surrounded almost by concrete blocks. That, that was the only spot where he felt a little tiny sensation. And normally he feel like when he, go, when he went outside, he said, oh, I, I, I just feel overloaded just by the power lines. Mm -hmm. So these walls are 17 inches thick. The house is built inside out. So I have protection from EMF, except that as soon as my neighbor got into uh, a, a high uh, or higher speed internet service, I don't know what that is, all of a sudden I, I started feeling it a bit. And, uh, but as soon as I went, if I sat where you are, all of a sudden I felt much better because the, um, the actual uh, what, what, uh, beams that come off, the energy beams, uh, don't turn too easily. And so, same thing with the EMF, the field that is developed by any type of resistor, which is what AC is, AC is, that's what's happening how many times a second? 16. And, how, and what's, it's being resisted all the time. Why is it that when you walk by the power line, you hear zzzz? I was living on Highway 10 and I was not feeling well. I said, there's something about this. It was a day similar to this, but much more humid. And so I went out and got my ladder. I mean, this is on Highway 10, okay? In the middle of the, uh, not quite in the middle of the day because I, I baked there. So I went up the ladder on, on the side, put a light bulb, uh, you know, in the proper direction, and it lit up in my hand. So first of all, I said, Nikola Tesla, you were right. <laughs> there is wireless transmission of power and you will see evidence of wireless power in this house during the tour I found it totally by accident uh, in this house even though I, I knew uh, it was just by accident that I put an implement and all of a sudden it charged itself now I charge my cell phones by wireless service uh, but it works a little slower than by plugging in so <laughs> So when I saw that, people would stop and say, are you crazy? He says, how, how are you doing that? <laughs> it's, it's lighting up. So by seeing this, I don't want to call stray voltage because people use stray voltage in, in a different way. So I, I recognize that there's energy going all around that we don't see. It's like an invisible pollution. And more and more people are becoming affected by it. And many of the people who are looking at improving their insulation or uh, 
taking account of making sure they have no phantom loads in their home. People know what I mean by phantom loads? Things are plugged in, but nothing is on. <laughs> Other than a little light. That's right. <laughs> and, and so, now I have phantom loads here, but it's, I plugged it into DC, so they're not generating any EMF. Well, what kind of light bulb was it you held up? What kind? At that time, it was an incandescent. What, an inc regular incandescent? Yeah, because this goes back to 1998, 1997. Did you feel anything when you were holding on to it? <laughs> Yeah, it started getting warm. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I wanted to let go. <laughs> but people were saying, can I do that? I said, no, no, no. This is, you know, because I was on public thoroughfare. And I was afraid that, because I had about half a dozen cars stopped on the side of the road looking mm -hmm. because they're seeing a light bulb being lit up by a crazy guy on a ladder <laughs> on the side of the highway. And, and I said, if a police stops by here, oh boy, I'm in, I'm in real trouble. But that was just an indication that, well, that's why they charge 9.2% extra on, I don't know if they still do it on the hydro bill, since I haven't had a hydro bill in a long time. Uh, <laughs> so 30% so, of it is lost. Well, you, you, have, you have a uh, uh, loss on the line. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and this was the other reason why Harold Medill, um, he said, if I could produce the power, remember we're talking about his system, if, the other reason I forgot to mention, he says, if I could produce the power on site, then it would also make sense. Because what ends up happening is the loss of power on the line has an impact. So if you're, if you're working on a very low margin, which this company in Meaford, is, it, their goal is to make money. They're not interested in power. They're interested in making money from Bruce Power, since they own 48, whatever percent of Bruce Power. And here, they're just interested in, in making money. So... Uh, Lost my train of thought there. So, but anyways, because um, I saw someone come, <laughs> he's going to be coming here in a moment. Uh, so the whole reason, for, okay. So I, I was involved with Healthwise for my, you know, how I, how effective EMF, and 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 so, and the other reason was there was, as I just say, an internal uh, yearning, uh, a drive to feel that I, I could be living the same as I am now, but uh, I don't have any children of my own that I know of, thank goodness, uh, but I, I cannot think that my parents and grandparents who fought wars in Europe and, and, and you know, wanted to make my life better, the least I can do is want to have life better for people in generations after me. And I, I, I saw that that wasn't necessarily working in the way that I was using or abusing power. So I took this as a personal thing. Mm -hmm. I, impose, I do not impose it on anyone else. So when, when we do the tour, I will not say this is what you should do. Absolutely not, because every system is based upon what's in here, which could be different than what's in here. Because you have certain needs that I may not have or whatever. For example, this house was built, I told you I had dual hip surgery. This house is built for wheelchair accessibility. So I have a ramp going up that, there. All the doors are wide enough for, for wheelchairs to get, get through. And in some cases, I don't even have doors. If you look behind where my bedroom is there, uh, you see mm -hmm. on, uh, on, to your right there, you can pull out. It's actually an old barn door. You just slide it across. <laughs> because that's a that's safe space. Now, I do have a few doors. Uh, because I was asked to by my family, you know, we want some privacy, and you know, there, there, there's room underneath there that I, you know, someone. I said, yeah, someone's going to look under there and see what <laughs> you're doing. Uh, but um, so the whole philosophy of how one lives had a great deal to do w with this. And from who I'm speaking about, everyone has an interest in this. But yet, renewable energy was the first type of lifestyle or living that people start asking, well, what's your payback, period? Mm -hmm. uh, and, I, and the first thing that came to my mind, I would say, what's the payback period of your vehicle? Mm -hmm. Never. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what it is. So why do you <clears throat> impose to say that solar panels or renewable energy have to have a payback period? Mm -hmm. So one of the fellows that... Uh, I hope we'll be speaking at, at this workshop, uh, is he will look at this balance sheet approach. 
that wherever you're starting from, you do what you think you can. Every system is hybrid, which means it caters to what you can and want to do. Now, I think I'm talking to the, uh, to the choir here, so I, I, you know, I, I think people have already been doing this. But here in Grey Bruce, when you look at other parts of the world, we're a little behind. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll be honest. We're way behind. <laughs> uh, because people did, did not have the fossil fuel and the ability uh, and, and the cost of energy was so low here when you compare it to what it is in Europe. They had to make certain uh, decisions about lifestyle. So we're hoping that with this workshop and with your help, if you want, we can have these tours of other people's homes, so you just don't have to think of talk, you know, listening to me. Is find out what, what motivated them and what they were doing to help you in your plan and what you want to do, because there is no right or wrong in trying to live a, a lifestyle more conducive to what nature is is giving us. Yes. Yeah. Well, I just want to that. You know, the idea of the workshop in the spring is, I'm totally on board with that. I don't see it as the end of the process. It's oh, almost no. like, okay, we can focus on a certain thing in that, and, and then another four months later, or another month, you know, the committee meets, and and we plan another workshop that has a focus on, you know, geothermal or on-grid net metering or that kind of stuff. So there's yeah. lots of issues to cover. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's good to see everybody out here, and uh, I have another commitment, so I'm going to have to leave, so you don't have to run and get another chair. Okay, thank you, Dave. Okay. Anyway, we'll see, probably see you folks in the near future, I'm sure. Well, Dave, uh, come by another time so I can show you the place. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. And, uh, all right, thank you. So, so basically, um, the whole concept of, 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 of a house of this nature, so I'm going to start to blend in a little bit, because you mentioned the word uh, dynamic. One's thinking is only dynamic if one wants to continue to progress. It becomes static when we said, I've got the answer. <laughs> I, I know what I'm doing. You know, I, I'm the best person on the planet, so, you know, environmentally, so leave me alone. You know, uh, no, because you can't live alone, right? You're all, whatever one does, it affects someone else and vice versa. So uh, the process here is also dynamic, and that, that's an important thing. It's an ongoing uh, journey. So, to talk about a few of the things about this house to start with, to, to because I can I see people are saying he feels way overboard. Uh, <laughs> but we're, we're we're getting we're only about eight seven minutes behind. Is that okay? <laughs> I'm looking specifically those people that I, I think I missed. It, that I, I don't want to see I that I, I'm not a man of my word. Um, the whole concept of living in a way that is I'll just say is a little different than others. You do it because you want to do it, first of all. You don't do it to say, look at me. Um, <coughs> I also did it because this is my retirement home. And, and I didn't have a huge pension, and I don't have a huge pension because I had an organic bakery and I basically survived. <laughs> so I look at my bank account and I know it's survival is on a very low level. <laughs> so I sold my farm to people I thought would take care of the organic farm I had, not realizing that they were going to just destroy it. Uh, but the only thing that they were interested in was the land and the solar equipment. They actually wrote that in the offer. We want the solar panels and all the devices that work with the solar because they were business people. And Mennonites, in many ways, are extremely good business people. They know how to work together. Mm -hmm. uh, every time I go past the farm now, I, I, I try not to look because I'll cry. Uh, but because of 27, 28 years of organic um, practices are now just twiddled away. So, but the, the idea being is that that's where, for me, I got a start and it, it came to here. So, health, uh, wanting to do uh, what I think is appropriate for, for me, uh, and listening to what others had to do to share with me. 
So it took 20 some years for me starting to look around and I didn't have groups like this. You know, I, I had to go and, and I'd say, God, I'm open to this, please. Anyone who's not, who, who, who's not religiously oriented, I'm using the, the term God in a very broad sense. Uh, I said, please help me here. I'm open to this. Give me an idea if I'm on the right path. And n not surprisingly, within a few days, it, it would happen. The, this place, I had, I was available, or sorry, was not available in the open market. I had sold my farm because the Mennonites were coming in and were offering huge amounts of money for, for land. And I figured, oh, geez, they're offering me twice as much for the land as what I thought the, build, the building was worth, and I spent all my money and energy on improving the building. And, and everything went just haywire. So I sold, and I only had a limited amount of time, and, and every building area or, or location I, I saw for me was either, uh, I can't believe what I say, wonderful building site. I said, it's underwater, how can it be a building site? Mm -hmm. Half the people, ones I saw were like that. So uh, it was one snowy Saturday morning, Someone, uh, my, my agent says, listen, something's just come on the market uh, five minutes ago. Can you go and take a look at it? I says, I'm already on my way. <laughs> and I got here, it was blizzardy. I couldn't, if you look to my west, it's a very nice view. Wow. And I couldn't see anything. And so I, I came up in a blizzard, walked up here, and I could feel there were two high spots. So I was actually standing probably where the fireplace uh, is now, and I said, God, please help me. How can I know whether this is my place or not? And in a, in a few moments, it died down. I looked around, and I couldn't move my feet. I said, this is the place. <laughs> so it happened very quickly. So I said, boy, this, this, this discussion, you know, as long as I guess I'm listening to what's being told, it actually works. But again, that's me personally, I don't want to say that. <laughs> so I got this place very quickly. And apart from all the uh, difficulties with construction, I had a, a design of a solar house. I call it solar because it uses mostly passive and a little bit of solar voltaic. And I have these uh, solar thermal collectors. Solar thermal collectors have already paid for themselves as of now. So uh, I'm not using any extra power. So what I paid for them, uh, and they can be used for hot water or heating the floor. Mm -hmm. I have never had to use the, uh, the heating in, in the floor ever yet. Mm -hmm. And I say the first day that I walk on this floor, barefoot in the morning, that I feel cold, I'm going to hook it up in the sixth year, and I have not done that yet. Again, thermal mass. So why do I have a concrete floor? Thermal mass. Why did I color it a little dark? So that when the sun comes through the windows, it will heat this. Because mm -hmm. I, I look at this as a whole bunch of rocks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. And so, and the wall, <laughs> inner walls of the, of the house, except for a few, are all 8-inch blocks. But they have one added feature which is what, where I took part in the construction of this house physically. All the holes in the blocks are filled with sand. Mm -hmm. to, to almost increase the amount of thermal mass by about 80%. So, so the blocks, so, and, and so the, the internal wall, walls, the, uh, this, all these, those, a few do not, are all exactly the same way. Eight inch blocks with sand inside. The wall is 17 inches thick, I said, so you can see by the windowsill. Well, why is it exactly 17 inches? Well, because that was my rough calculation so that in the middle of summer, when the sun is the highest and it's the warmest, the sun will never come in and touch the floor because of the overhang. So you have an overhang, the sun coming down, it will only get to the width of the, win of the, of the windowsills. Windows do not open to the south, so I can improve the quality of the sun rays coming into the house. The other thing is that other rays, sun rays, that are not part of light, can also heat up thermal mass. 
So if I'm a, and so now the solar industry is finding out, oh, well, we, we can make use of energy with, from ultraviolet and infrared, and, and, and that's a start. So I assume that Nikola Tesla was right. I'm using his name again because I studied him. That we are only making use of 10, less than 10% of the energy of the sun. So now it's up to us. Now he had ways uh, of increasing that, but it never seemed to work out uh, because he got involved in other things. Uh, so now the solar industry is finding out, yeah, we can make use of the ultraviolet infrared to produce electricity. But the design of this house was not to produce high amount of electricity. It was to maintain and moderate temperatures within the house, so that I can so I for my lifestyle I don't need to produce as much electricity because the most inefficient part of this house are the solar panels, because you lose in the conversion of light rays into the solar panel to produce DC to get through a wire which is no loss but most ways uh, that they're producing power they're, they're converted to AC where there's another 30% loss in power and then you're tra having to travel someplace else where there's another loss of power well there's just too many losses for me so I looked at if everyone could produce a little bit of power in their own house then you make it so that um, the centralized form of power production is is not needed as much. Well, you mentioned concrete. What what's the what type of concrete? Is it, like, is it just regular concrete or? Is yeah, it like, it's. Um, oh, I because I know there is an insulated, a new. Yes. Kind of concrete, uh, uh, now the one I have is uh, I can't answer. It. Um, it's not the standard because I paid about fifty percent more than the standard concrete because I want, I just started was getting the idea of uh, carbon footprint and realizing that the carbon footprint in concrete is enormous. Mm -hmm. Well, so what I did was I said, well, how can we improve on that and still have concrete for the thermal mass? And the fellow says, well, here's what we can do. I can go to a company in Quebec and, and they will bring it in. It's going to cost you about 50% more. And I said, go for it. So um, I have it written down someplace. It actually has a specific name. Well, ICF is what I've heard of. Yeah. So wait, Some, yeah. Someone is uh, really persistent. I have two different lines. <laughs> They're really persistent. Um, mm. so, so basically the ICF, the Integrated Concrete Form, it, uh, uses um, so some concrete and other elements. Interesting you mentioned that. Uh, I was on a TV program, uh, not TV, a uh, radio program, and a fellow who has a company that has this, suggested that his ICF system is the most energy efficient and as far as insulation and around, and I said, uh, it over 40% more of an insulator, and I said, I want you to come to my house, bring your materials, you have the devices to prove that? He goes, yes. I says, I want you to come to my house, and we're going to compare. He took me up on it. And then he says, wow, I won't make that claim again to anyone I know that has the type of system that you have. <laughs> I said, well, what about the straw bale type of homes that also have a great opportunity, especially if you use hemp, a, a, a caking type of hemp, I don't know what that, that's called, but put hemp together with lime and water and it lives and breathes. You put that together with straw bale and whatever and you've got a living, breathing wall that will do almost, boy, someone is really persistent. Have <laughs> uh, you take a break and you can answer? No, no, I know who it is. I saw who it oh, was. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so basically, the system I have done is a, a way of, that in case I have a problem with my hips, will allow me, because I've had experience in not having any mobility whatsoever, that it's an open concept. If I have a a wheelchair or if I have to use a cr uh, crutches or cane, I can get by and I found that this type of flooring uh, offered me the best ability to do that mm -hmm. and to supply energy from underneath in case I ever needed it with my inlay flooring, mm -hmm. he floor heating. So, but the basic concept is, is that I looked at where the sun was, figured that out because I'm a mathematician uh, out of university, so I could figure all that out 
at what angles the sun comes in. And so when in the winter, or very soon, usually November the 1st, I, I do certain things like I start moving some furniture so this, when the sun is up and in, in, you know, coming through the windows, it's actually hitting the floor. Mm -hmm. December 21st, it actually hits this wall uh, just about there. So it's actually heating this wall as well. So important thing for me is that you say, well, you're using a semi-renewable source of wood. If everyone heated their home with wood, we couldn't breathe the air that we, you know, anywhere. Well, I use just uh, just over a bush cord a year. That's all I use. I planted back at the old farm five, six hundred trees, which are now uh, 30, 20, 30, 40 feet high, uh, that are still up. I pull from my body. My, all my living ar uh, arrangements are to do with, so I feel healthy there. I'm not going to uh, build a home or I'm not going to drive a car or live in an area that I feel unhealthy. And so I have a choice on that. So what you're going to see is the results of choices that I have made. They're not right or wrong, they're just different. So the house, as you say, is very open concept uh, for allowing these wonderful little winds, the spinners that improve the heat of the house when the wood stove is going by about 50%. And they, they turn based upon heat, and they're wonderful. So I like I like when I get a, a benefit without plugging in. <laughs> they're lo locally sourced. Yes. What's and the, what's the brand name? Caframo. Yeah, Caframo. Yeah. Now I was hope. Now, thank you for asking that. So when I looked at the construction of this house, my goal was that everything that was here, except for the solar. Uh, it'd be about 80% local. And I think I came very close to that. Uh, solar, I have just under 3 kilowatts of Kyocera, which is not in our backyard, it's on the other side of the planet. <laughs> but unfortunately... For how many kilowatts you say? Just under 3. Under three. And when I did my calculation of the amount of energy I use, that I, that I basically used, they will be paid for in the next two years. So in, after two years, my entire cost of my whole solar uh, system will have been totally paid for, and and I because I haven't and I haven't had any hydro bill, and uh, so excuse me, you're saying that you. You've been here six years. Yes. And so, within two more years, you'll have your whole house paid for. Like you'll have all, all the solar, the, the photovoltaics, solar mm -hmm. hot water, my battery bank, my inverter, and my charge control. All when we go in, you'll see the mechanic room. All that will have been paid for within within about two years. So that's eight years. Yes. It used to be about twenty years right. okay. when I first got them, but. Um, and, yeah. Just to make sure I understand, in your previous home you had net metering, but here you're off grid. Totally off, because I, because why was that's a good question. Because when I was net metering, it showed me things I could do when I said, oh, the meter's running the wrong way, which means I'm being charged. So I learned slowly for that eight ten years that I was living in that house that I had that then I knew I could make slight adjustments to how I lived, how I looked at things. But see, I had it easy. I'm one. I didn't have any roommate <laughs> or roommates that did not think how I did and would just Leave have... The lights on. Or yeah, or, or do a, a lot of things. Like, yeah. for example, I do not shower in the mornings. <laughs> It's funny how like I, I, re I really morning. enjoy the people who laugh when I do that. <laughs> and and uh, but I shower at night because that's when my solar hot water is the most efficient, and I will have uh, heat in the water tank even on today. It is absorbing a little bit because I can hear the I can feel the pump working. It's not working very strongly, but so in the morning I always have less hot water than I will at night. So I said, I, I, I'm okay with taking showers at night, but some people are not. So I've made that 
I made that you know the, the decision to do that. So that was a that was a, a good question about how many, <clears throat> how many people are on grid. Okay, now now based upon that, do you think that I am doing anything better than you are? I haven't tasted your yeah. bacon. Yet. Okay, I'm saving somebody, mm -hmm. but no, but. You have a greater opportunity at this point in time to do far more than what I do because you can make slight adjustments. For example, it, to me, uh, when the power goes down, the grid goes down, I would always, when I had the old place, I, I would look for ways to plug in a generator which is run off gas or, you know, I figure how can I live without power, without any power? <clears throat> well, here, much of my time, I mean, I still have a TV set, so I still have Bell Express View, but there are times of the day where I, I'm not using any power whatsoever, so why be plugged in? So that's a decision that I've made. So being on the grid, you have so much more that you can do based upon what your circumstances are. So <coughs> think of a journey getting from one point to another. If you're here and someone else is there, could something the person who was done here help to get you to get closer so you could save a great deal and not feel that you have to go back to the 19th century lifestyle. How there you, are. How do you cook and cool? Okay, interesting thing. And are, and Vito, are we going to do a bit of a walk? Oh, around? yes, yes. Okay, we're, so, we're very close to that. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, 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 do you have to walk? <laughs> I do, my bum's numb. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean, refrigerate when I say cool. Yeah, I like to get it up. Okay, so, yeah. <laughs> so, 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 so,